Okay, first of all, apologies. Uh, you cannot see me. Uh, that is due to uh, some unexpected problems with my camera that we have just detected uh, uh, just before starting the uh, the event. So, so I apologize, but I hope at least you could hear me. So that is the first apologies. Second is disclaimer. I'm not talking on behalf of the Aarhus Convention Compliance Committee. I'm a member of it. I'm not talking on behalf of my university, nor on behalf of any other uh, organization or institution. It is just in my personal capacity. Uh, what I would like to uh, talk about is a bit about the role of implementation reports and shadow reports generally than about the uh, practice in Aarhus Convention and finally about some key issues that might be discussed later on. Uh, the implementation reports and the shadow reports, that is the commonly used name for the uh, reports, which are alternative reports prepared by the civil society. In many of the international environmental agreements, are considered very important element of monitoring compliance. Uh, there are actions for lack of reporting, for... If the reports are not provided, or the reports are not provided, or they are not system, they are usually provided International environmental conventions, very seriously. I remember from my practice, I was a member of the ESPO implementation committee, which is a similar to Aarhus compliance committee, similar body that oversees compliance. And for well, about 12 years, I was a member of this body. And I remember it was quite often uh, subject to deliberations of the implementation committee. There were cases. Uh, so that was a systematic approach to the implementation uh, reports. Uh, they were prepared differently than in Aarhus. In Aarhus, as uh, uh, already was mentioned, uh, there are one of the means for compliance mechanisms. Uh, however, the Aarhus Convention uh, is uh, commonly praised for making uh, another means for compliance monitoring uh, the most important, and that is namely the communications from the public, also submissions from the parties. So most of the attention is focused on these uh, two uh, means or instruments. Uh, most of the attention of the compliance committee, but also the uh, secretariat. Therefore, the implementation reports and shadow reports are not um, featuring or are not playing similar role as in other conventions. I myself do not really recall a case uh, for the non-reporting or inadequate report. I don't recall cases where the shadow reports would be prominently featuring in the debates of the compliance committee. Uh, 
there are several reasons for this, but the, I, which I will come back to this in a moment. Uh, the result is that neither the implementation reports nor the synthesis report that is made by consultants to the secretariat really show the uh, or really play a role in the in the in monitoring compliance with the convention not even show the real situation regarding implementation of the Aarhus Convention. So it is uh, done, but I think it does not play the role that it could have played in the overall uh, uh, implementation of the, of the convention. This is despite the fact that the convention requires national implementation reports to be prepared uh, in a transparent, also that was already mentioned, transparent and participatory manner, which means that it should be not just governmental reports, but the national reports. Uh, so in a way that should, they should provide uh, objective picture of the implementation. This, to my knowledge, is rarely the case because as also already was mentioned by Susanna, it uh, uh, rarely the process is really fully participatory, fully transparent, Sometimes there are no uh, such processes at all. And a number of countries do not bother to report at all. There is a debate in a general in theory of uh, uh, international law, whether non-reporting is, uh, is to be considered as non-compliance generally. So that whether the countries could be punished, Susanna mentions what sanctions could be uh, implied. But first issue is, is this really uh, a non-compliance? Uh, and as I said, that, that is not very, very clear. Uh, that depends pretty much on, on the convention and on the people who are involved in, in, in the convention bodies. But generally, this is not crystal clear. Uh, but uh, what I would like to um, underline is that the shadow reports can play different roles. If there is non-reporting at all, that perhaps the shadow report is the only one report. If, if indeed there is a mm, non-participatory reporting, then indeed it could have a role. But it is slightly different situation where you would have a country with a fully participatory process of preparing the national report, and that just uh, the authors of the shadow report would have some different views that were not reflected in the national report. And that is yet another situation. Uh, these uh, have a bearing on um, the way or the approach to these reports generally by the convention bodies. And Obviously, the more participatory is the process of preparation, the shadow report, the more value it has. I don't know what was the process leading to preparation of the reports that would be presented today, but it's just a general uh, 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 reflection. 
And finally, uh, key issues. So it is, what is the result? What, is it worthwhile to do that? That would be worthwhile if they are taken seriously, if they are mm, somehow taken into account by the compliance bodies of the convention. And here, as I said, I, I don't think this is currently the case. Uh, the, this is the fact that the results of shadow reports might be the basis for separate compliance cases. So it would be saying this is quite straightforward. The compliance committee would need to have a look at the results of the shadow report. If it was a case in which the results and the results regarding the systemic issues, because that's the role, it's about systemic issues, systemic non-compliance, not about the uh, or to one of instances where the com convention is not uh, complied with. But if there are serious reasons uh, for um, systemic non-compliance, just to make it known in the shadow report is useful, but not necessarily would lead to any further steps. And another uh, factor or another possibility is that the uh, results of the shadow reports are widely referred to in the pending cases regarding compliance. And that is also rarely the case. No one really in submitting a compliance case uh, or hardly at all refer to the results of this uh, shadow reports. So in order not to lose significant amount of time and resources that you uh, uh, spent on preparing the shadow reports, you need to think on the future, how this reports or the results of the reports uh, would be used in any other formal processes. So that was just by way of introduction. Thank you very much for listening and I'm looking forward to see the concrete results from the countries. Thank you.